Good morning. A question that's been on my mind for a long time is what exactly is long COVID? Um, I'm Dr. Robert Groisman, and this is what I'm going to be talking about today. The question about long COVID is a problem because it really lacks a definition. We don't really have a good way of knowing how to define it. There's inconsistency in symptoms, um, there's no real test with it, and the timing from when you have COVID uh, to the time you develop long COVID is variable. So let's take a look at the two, um, I guess, most common definitions. One comes from WHO or World Health Organization, and they define long COVID as post-COVID-19 condition occurs in individuals with a history of probable or confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infection, usually three months from the onset of COVID. So three months after, that's how um, who defines it. And it has to last for at least two months once you get it. And it can be explained by an alternate diagnosis. Um, what they consider common symptoms include fatigue, shortness of breath, cognitive dysfunction. Uh, but there's other, obviously, um, symptoms involved, and they have to impact daily functioning. They have to persist beyond the acute COVID-19 episode, and the symptoms may fluctuate or relapse over time. Then we look at the CDC, or the Health and Human Services um, definition. This is what the CDC uses, and it defines it as... Um, <laughs> occurring after COVID-19, as expected, and the symptoms are present four weeks now, four weeks or more after the initial uh, phase of the infection. So who defines it as three months after? And CDC and HHS defines it as three weeks after. So who's right? Oh, I'm sorry, four weeks after. Uh, so who's right? Um, the symptoms are different. Uh, and the definitions are different. So even they can't agree on what the definition of long COVID is. What are the symptoms? There's one study uh, looking at 50 other studies of symptoms. And they've looked at all the studies uh, that reported these symptoms. And they're all different. Um, some of them reported... Uh, issues with uh, breathing, uh, there's reported more issues with smell dysfunction. But overall, if you look at all of the symptoms, and there's over 100 of them, um, the most common one is shortness of breath. The second most common one was the change in smell and taste. And the third was fatigue. These are some of the most common symptoms that I've heard about or I've seen. So fatigue, obviously change in taste and smell anxiety and depression, uh, post-exertional malaise or PEM, nausea and vomiting, shortness of breath, uh, coughing, chest pain, palpitations and tachycardia, brain fog, uh, headache and insomnia, pins and needles, joint pain and muscle pain, this one I've heard a lot, uh, rashes, uh, different kinds of rashes, abdominal pain, diarrhea, tinnitus, hoarse voice or trouble swallowing, uh, hair loss, uh, vertigo, dizziness, and hot flushes. So these are just the most common ones, but there's obviously a lot of others. So this one, if we look, has them by system. And depending on uh, which system you, you look at, uh, there's, there's many, many symptoms. So this, these here would be considered uh, systemic sim symptoms. And obviously fatigue is the most common, followed by post-exertional malaise. Uh, people have been reporting issues with menstrual cycle um, abnormalities, and these show up here, either um, an abnormal menstrual cycle or irregular periods, or even early onset of menopause can occur. Um, then you have, on this side, issues with the e head, ear, nose, and throat, um, and things like runny nose or dry eyes or itchy eyes, um, numbness, uh, all of these are 
symptoms that can occur in long COVID. Vision symptoms are big too. They're fairly high on the, on the list, including blurred vision. Uh, if we look at the cardiovascular palpitations, the tachycardia, the big ones, notice there's no um, vibrations in the chest or, by, or uh, vibration sense, uh, sensations that are felt that are listed here. Um, if we go to the gastrointestinal ones, things like diarrhea and nausea and abdominal pain are, are very common as well. Then we can look at the muscular and usually tightness or pain or joint stiffness and pain are the most common ones. And there's some immune ones here that you can read. Uh, dermatological usually talks about rashes. So these are mainly uh, neurologic and psychiatric ones. And you can see this is kind of where long COVID mainly focuses on everything from anxiety to depression, um, to apathy, to um, things like dizziness and vertigo, uh, tingling in pins and needles, tremors. These are, these are very, very common. And here's the one that people seem to report about, the vibrating sensations. So this is neurological. This is not uh, issues with your heart or lungs or anything. This is a neurologic problem. Things with your memory, short-term and long-term memory issues. Headaches, migraines are very common. Of course, everybody knows about this one, parosmia, anosmia, dysgeusia, uh, loss of taste, smell, and everything related to that. There's obviously issues with sleep, uh, including vivid dreams and nightmares, um, restless leg syndrome. Uh, insomnia is a big one in long COVID. Speech and language. Difficulty finding the right word. This is kind of like brain fog. Um, not being able to communicate properly or be able to get the words out. Brain fog is listed here though. And I guess separately as cognitive functioning as opposed to speech and language. But I still consider that's part of the same, same system. Um, I'm not going to mention hallucinations since this one is not very common. What conditions are associated with long COVID? Well, POTS, um, you see this very commonly uh, associated, which is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Um, it seems to be reproducing a lot of the same symptoms in long COVID, uh, minus the um, taste and smell. The chronic fatigue syndrome, this is very much associated with long COVID. MCAS or mast cell activation syndrome is also seen. We have seen reactivation of Epstein-Barr virus and herpes zoster. And of course, there's the new onset of autoimmune condition you've never had before, and all of a sudden you do. So I wanted to show the whole breadth of long COVID, how it's difficult to really define what it is and how multisystemic it is and how we are constantly finding new symptoms that are associated with long COVID. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.